Hello everyone, welcome to EMK Academy. Today we're going to learn about linear equations. At the end of this video, you should be able to solve equations with one variable. In mathematics, a linear equation is an equation that may be put in the form a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a n a x n plus b equal to zero where x1 up to x n are the variables or the unknowns and b a1 up to a n are the coefficient which are often real numbers frequently the term linear equation refers implicitly to the case of just one variable. In this case, the equation can be put in the form ax plus b equal to zero. And it has a unique solution. In this case, we can remove b on this side and also on the other side so we do not change the equation and this one goes away so we have a x equal minus b we can then divide by a on both sides so we don't change anything so this one goes away we have x equal to minus b divided by a which is the unique solution and in general a should be different from zero. In this case, the name unknown is sensibly given to the variable x. In the case where a equal to zero, then if also b equal to zero, then every number is a solution. However, if a equal to zero and b is different from zero, there is no solution. And then we talk about an equation that is inconsistent. So you can also define the equation with two or more variables. But in this video, we focus on equations with one variable only. Let's take an example. We can have 5x plus 3 equal to 18 and we are required to solve the equation to find the value of x. What we can do here, we want to isolate x to stay on one side. So the first step is to remove 3 on both sides. So we will have 5x plus 3 minus 3 equal to 18 minus 3. So we remove the same element in both sides. Those ones cancel each other. We then have 5x equal to 18 minus 3 is 15. And then we can now divide by 5 on both sides. So here we get x on the other side. We get 15 divided by 5, which is 3. And the solution for this equation is x equal to 3. We may have a situation where we have the variable or the letter on both sides. So here we're talking about x, but it can be any other letter. It could be n, it could be z. To solve an equation, you have to get the letter on its own on one side of the equation. Let's say you have 2 minus 2x equal to 26 plus 4x. So what we want to do now is to bring all the x's on one side, either to the left or to the right. Here we can see that we can add 2x on this side, and we can also add 2x on the other side. And those two will eliminate each other. We have 2 equal to 26 plus 4x plus 2x is 6x. So now that we have 
this form, we can then send 26 on this side. This is done by removing 26 on both sides. So this one goes away. So what is left is minus 24 equal to 6x. Now we can divide by 6 on both sides. So we have minus 4 equal to x or also can be written as x equal to minus 4. Sometimes you may have equations with brackets. For example, 19 equal to 8 minus 2, 5 minus 3y. We change the variable to y to show that you can have different letters as variable. Always start by multiplying out the bracket, then collecting the terms. So in this case, we have 19 equal to 8. 2 times 5, minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. Minus 2 times minus 3y is plus 6y. We have 19 equal to 2, 8 minus 10 is minus 2 plus 6y. Automatically, you can send 2 on the other side and change the sign. Or you can just add 2 on both sides so that those two eliminate each other. And then we have 21 equal to 6y. And then this requires that we divide by 6 on both sides. So we have y equal to 21 divided by 6. This fraction can be simplified by dividing by 3 both the numerator and the denominator. What we have here is 7 divided by 2, which is the solution, or can be written as 3.5. Let's try one more. So we have 7r plus 2 equal to 5 bracket r minus 4. What we have here is 7r plus 2. Let's multiply the parentheses first. 5 times r is 5r. 5 times minus 4 is minus 20. What we have now, what you can do is send the r on this side, changing the sign, and send 2 on the other side, changing the sign, which is equal to subtracting 5 on both sides and subtracting 2 on both sides, what we have is 7r minus 5r equal to minus 20 minus 2. This gives us 2r equal to minus 22. And then we divide it by 2 on both sides. We have r equal to minus 22 divided by 2, which is minus 11. So the solution is r minus 11. So sometimes we may have equations with fractions. When you have an equation with fractions, you need to get rid of any fractions before solving. You can do this by multiplying every term by the lowest common multiple of the denominators. Let's see if we have x divided by 3 plus x minus 1 divided by 4. So to solve this, you need to be able to do operations with fractions. If we remember our lecture on fractions, so we can find the common denominator. In this case, we have the, the lowest multiple of 3 and 5, which is 15. What we do now is 15 divided by 3 which gives us 5, and then times 5 times x, we have 5x. So 15 divided by 5, it's 3. 3 multiplied by x minus 1, we have plus 3, x minus 1, equal to 11. We can then multiply out the parentheses on the numerator, 
what we have is 5x plus 3x minus 3 divided by 15 equal 11. And this, the top one, will be 8x minus 3 divided by 15 equal to 11. In this situation now, if you have a divided by b equal to c, you assume there is 1 on the c, then you multiply this way, so you get a equal to bc. The same way, if you have a divided by b equal to c divided by d, then you multiply across, and then you have ad equal to bc. That means we can multiply out, if we assume there is 1 down there, we multiply 15 by 11 and 1 by the numerator. So we have 8x minus 3 equals to 15 times 11, which gives us 165. So we can then continue over here. So we have 8x minus 3 equal to 165. We can then add 3 on both sides plus 3, 165 plus 3, this is equal to sending 3 on the other side and change the sign, so we have 8x equal to 168. Now, we can divide by 8 on both sides, so we have x equal to 168 divided by 8, which is 21, and this is the solution of our linear equation. So we take one more example. It says solve 29 minus x divided by 4 equal to x plus 5. You can multiply like this as we said, or if we multiply both sides by 4, what we have is 4 times 29 minus x divided by 4 equal to 4 times x plus 5. So by multiplying by 4 on both sides, we don't change the equation. This one goes away. So we have 29 minus x equal to 4, 4 times x is 4x. Four, 4 times 5 is plus 20. And then we can send x over here and then 20 over here with changing the sign, so we have 29 minus 20 equal to 4x plus x, which is 9 equal to 5x, and the value of x will be found by dividing by 5 on both sides, so we have 9 divided by 5, which is the solution of our equation. Sometimes it requires us to think about more about the problem and then create our own equations. In this case, you are given a rectangle with known perimeter, 20 meter, and then you are asked to find the value of one side. So we know that the perimeter of a rectangle is equal to the length plus the width, times 2. In this case, we know that the perimeter is 20 equals to the length is 5 over x, and then the width is 2 meter times 2. Now, you can either multiply inside the parameter, or you can choose to divide by 2 both sides. So we have 5x plus 2 times 2 divided by 2 goes away, so we have 10 equal to 5x plus 2. These two can go on the other side. What is left is 8 equal to 5 divided by x. And x is in the bottom now, so by multiplying out this way and this way, what we get is 8x equal to 5 and the value of x can be found by dividing by 8 on both sides, so we have 
5 over 8, which is the value of x. So we can verify that. We say 5 over x, and then we know that x equal to 5 over 8. So this will be 5 divided by 5 over 8, which is 5 times 8 divided by 5. Because dividing two equations require that we multiply with the inverse. So this goes away. So this length is actually 8 meter. And then if you take 8 plus 2, gives you 10 meters times 2, we get 20 meter as the perimeter. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to support this channel and be empowered.